The path to economic reform in China lies through political reform that makes the once in eight decade transition in the top leadership kicking off at this week's party congress a crucial leading indicator of the growth outlook. The top question is who ends up on the Politburo Standing Committee, China's top decision-making body. The only two with guaranteed seats are Vice President Xi Jinping and Vice Premier Li Keqiang. A place and an economics brief for Wen Kishan, seen as Mr. Fix-It for China's financial sector, would be a positive Mr. Huang help open mainland securities markets to foreign investment banks and heads Team China in managing economic relations with the U.S. He is the best equipped to take on complex overhauls like interest rate and exchange rate liberalization essential to rebalance China's growth. That present though, it isn't even clear how many seats are available. The current arrangement has nine, which many believe is to come some for effective decision making. A shift to seven is in the cards making it easier to achieve consensus on tough reforms that necessarily create losers as well as winners. More speculatively, is there any hint of greater democracy within the Communist Party or a stronger commitment to the rule of law? Increasing competition in the selection of leaders with more candidates than positions and a vote within the party to see who gets them would introduce greater meritocracy. Greater independence for the legal system would help clamp down on rampant corruption and abuse of power. All this matters because China's economy is in serious need of a fix. The International Monetary Fund estimates capacity utilization has fallen from more than 80% during the last leadership transition in 2000 to 60% in 2011. The World Bank's Doing Business Indicator ranks China 91st, below Moldova and Namibia. Transparency International's Corruption Perceptions Index puts the country at 75th, equal with Romania. That didn't matter when all China had to do in order to grow was build new export factories. Now it does. China's growth rate has already have from a peak of 14.8% year over year in the second quarter of 2007 to 7.4% in the third quarter of 2012. To ensure it doesn't fall further, the Communist Party needs a top rank that can make tough decisions and clamp down on the rampant graft that undermines legitimacy and good governance concrete policies on rebalancing China's economy breaking up state monopolies in sectors like telecom, overhauling the urban presidency and land rights systems that hold back China's 650 million farmers, and pressing ahead with liberalization of exchange and interest rates are still to come. Those are needed to reduce China's dependence on investment as opposed to consumer spending. But the coming transition will give early signals on whether China's leadership is equal to the task.